Hello. Now on um, software design, I'm going to talk um, to you about interfaces and abstractions. And I'm going to talk about it in the context of um, coupling. Why? Why coupling is relevant here? Uh, and, and in some sense, the mystify the, this idea that uh, interfaces by itself are the, the solution. Actually, the solution are, uh, are abstractions. Okay. So, how, how can I look at that? So, if you think in terms of um, the coupling, the question you, you need to ask yourself is, why, when I change this module, sometimes it, the propagation of change occurs very often, and other times, not that often. So, it's what is the level of coupling between the components, okay? And this level of components, why, why is the reason of this level of component, of this level of, of coupling? And, and, and what is interesting is people say, hey, it doesn't have a good interface, but what is an interface? And what is actually this idea to have a good interface, okay? So if you think in terms of um, uh, the idea is that interface should hide an implementation, okay? And, but that is this called encapsulation, but actually the, what is relevant is understand what is in the interface, what is not hidden. And the point is, what is the abstraction? And what is not hidden should be what does not change frequently. And the point is, is difficult to find what, what, what does not change difficult, uh, frequently? And it's not that, that, that easy. Okay, so let's, let's go and first understand uh, different types of interfaces to see this idea how, how to deal with, uh, with, with the change. So there are, I, I only pick, uh, I think, five types of interface. There are more. You, in the literature, you'll find uh, more intermediate. But uh, I think that with these five, you can have a, an idea about the level of coupling that you can have just in terms of uh, actually, what is what type of knowledge is shared between these these uh, uh, modules that interact through the interface? And first one, you have um, one case where basically you have no interface. It's an interface by itself in the sense, okay, everything is visible. So uh, the interface, so the what, what is in the interface is basically the implementation. And you don't have encapsulation, which means that if you expose all the attributes, we'll see everything that is uh, inside. And so every time you change the implementation of a module, all the modules that use this, 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 uh, this, this other module or this model, the, all the other modules need to change, okay? Because it's just, uh, you are not uh, encapsulating. Another thing is, okay, you have an interface, but in this interface, you have complex entities as parameters. So you define complex entities, entities that have a lot of structure. So as soon as you define them, it means that this is a contract between your module and the module that are using it. So basically, it's a shared data model. By having this shared data model means that every time you need to change, you need to agree with the other one. So it means that you propagate changes. But of course, now you are encapsulating uh, the, the implementation of the module, except for what is in this shared data model. So the shared data, data, data model uh, is not by itself a problem if it is stable. So if it is a good abstraction. If it is not stable, then okay. And that is the, the main point about it. Okay. Another thing is that, okay, I don't have a shared data model. I only have a sample data types. I would say that I will have lower coupling. But again, it depends because, okay, these, these data types, these sample data types are there in integers, uh, floats, whatever. But if you need to change the number of data types, it may, depending on the programming language, of course, but you, 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 you may have a higher coupling, okay? But of but you understand that you are so you, do, you don't need so much at least synthetic agreement between the different modules. Okay, then 
if an, an, another of uh, way to define the interface is when it is a uh, uh, the, is a program is is independent of a programming language. In this case, your interface is hiding the implementation of a particular programming language, like uh, what we have. So we have in, in our project, you have the client, which is the front end in JavaScript, and actually you have a uh, web. He uses web services. Actually, this is implemented in Java, but you, by using web services, you just can uh, change these and decide to change the, the implementation. Uh, it's interesting this type of um, coupling. Uh, it's not very common that you rewrite a complete uh, application in terms of a programming language. It, and usually here the quality is more in terms of interoperability, in the sense that you, you when the implementation of this is in the, different, in the context of uh, different organizations, so you can use modules of different organizations if they provide a, um, uh, an API that is language agnostic, okay? And so it's an example of REST, okay, in our case. So another thing that you can create decoupling and um, I decoupling, although it's, it's tricky to look at it, is if, if the interface contains a meta model like uh, an XML uh, schema, which means that this allows this component that provides this uh, XML-like interface to change the schema, to change the type of information is. is. So the others, the, the, the other components that use it, do not need to change synthetically. Why? Because what they need to do is just they read the schema and then they can basically interpret the XML data that is in the interface. But of course, they need to provide some semantic meaning to the data because the schema basically describes the, the syntax. But, but you see that in computer science, people have been worrying about interfaces and a barring, uh, uh, worrying about what is the level of decoupling the interfaces. But in my point of view, this is not enough because most of these mechanisms are synthetic. And what is more relevant here is basically how stable is what we, you, you expose in your interface, okay? And let's go for it. So the question we really need to answer is, how, it, how is it easy to define an interface, okay? One that provides low coupling. And we see this is not just a matter of uh, deciding, okay, let's do a REST interface, or let's use a, uh, an interface that depends on XML schema, and uh, no. Think about this. Do you know what is this? This is, uh, well, at least a, a version of the Java collections, okay? So it provides interfaces. This is well-known interface. And now look at this. Well, this is Java collection for Scala. And if you read this, we'll see that uh, they copy. So they are very similar. And if you look in the history of defining the interfaces for collections, we know that they have been changing and improving. So it means that something that now you look simple as a collections library took some time to define the correct implementations. But now that people agree on these implementations, people just keep copying these abstractions. So it's difficult to find an abstraction? Yes, it is difficult. It takes time. And is something that, as we'll discuss, most of the times comes bottom-up, not top-down, in the sense that is by testing and developing a lot of applications and experimenting with different types of interfaces for collections that we start understanding which ones are stable, which ones basically can encapsulate the internal implementation. Okay, and then you define interfaces that are stable and that provide low coupling. Okay, so a good interface depends on a good abstraction. And how can I get a good abstraction? If I ask you what is the abstraction of animal, maybe you can think uh, like a human that tries to understand a, a global knowledge of everything. It says, well, you know, it has body, it has members, and then you start going to these teeny details of what is an animal. But actually, 
when you develop software, you are not worrying, you are not writing an encyclopedia about animal. You are writing a set of functionalities where animal is a relevant context in the particular context of the functionality. Because if I tell you that is animal for a zoo, an application in a zoo is different from an, an animal in the, for an application in a butcher shop. Okay? And the same if it is an and the, and the same occurs if it is an application where you just uh, lost your pet and you go for a web application where you just insert information and people that find it can 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 uh, relate it this this pet they they just found uh, uh, out in the street with uh, your the one you are looking for so abstractions depend on a context and in software you should not try to go for the correct abstraction, really, 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 completely correct, okay? Although, so you should go for the abstractions for your particular case. I'm not saying that probably for in, in the case of the collections, you, you cannot get this type of abstraction. That is a, that are particular types of abstraction that are a bit uh, domain independent or domain agnostic, so you have collection is not uh, like animal uh, which is a uh, domain specific i need an animal in my domain in my business logic okay but even those th those that are agnostic that are domain agnostic took some time to understand okay because uh, it's not easy to get to get these abstractions okay so let's see what is the the final message Abstractions depend on the context, and it's not easy to find the right abstractions. It takes a long time. Okay, so what we have uh, done, we have been looking at uh, this concept of uh, coupling. Try to see how to deal with coupling and all the work that we have in uh, interfaces, where you try to define different syntax for the interfaces the, and different so that you basically decouple, but at the end of the day, abstraction. And as a software engineer, you are a good software engineer if you can actually find the right abstractions. And uh, you are a bad software engineer if you get uh, abstraction uh, uh, obsessed and basically you just keep uh, thinking about to find an abstraction that solves all the problems. Okay, enjoy.